Hi, I'm Danielle Dufo, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. What is it like to be a bat? They roam the night when it's pitch black. Their prey is small, fast, and well camouflaged. It seems like a losing battle, but the bat has another card under its wing. It can see the echoes of its own voice. It's the most advanced sensory tool in nature, and it's evolved separately in several different species. This is echolocation. We're just conducting a little experiment, trying to find out how the devil bat does his killing. Animals have built-in, military-grade machinery in their heads. A biological sonar system. The animal will make a high-pitched noise and hear the echo, allowing them to map the world around them. When the sounds bounce off of different materials, they sound different. And the closer the object is, the faster the sound will bounce. This is an amazing strategy, but it has a big drawback. As the high-pitched noise travels and disperses through the air, it loses power density. Some of the sound is also absorbed by the air and water. But to deal with this, they have two adaptations. They can make extremely loud noises that can travel far, and they have amazingly sensitive hearing. The best natural sonar belongs to bats, who use it to catch prey as small as a moth. There are over 1,200 species, and over half of these spooky creatures echolocate. You've heard about the bats they have here. Some of them bats is rabid. Well... Different species use different frequencies, and they range from about 20 to 200 kilohertz. Lower frequencies travel further, but higher frequencies paint the best 3D picture of their surroundings, especially when they chirp 200 times a second. Luckily, their sonar is outside our range of hearing. Their clicks can be as loud as a chainsaw, and if we were able to hear thousands of flying chainsaws at night, we'd never sleep again. The clicks go out extremely loud, but by the time they come back, they can be thousands of times quieter. To detect them, they need super hearing. Their inner ear has a very high concentration of receptor cells. In some species, they can tell differences in sound as slight as 0.1 hertz. To prevent their chainsaw loud chirps from destroying their sensitive ears, they physically unplug their ears. They can contract muscles in their head to detach the inner ear bones from each other. The most amazing thing about it is that they can chirp for a few milliseconds, then plug their ears back for a few milliseconds, and repeat the process over 200 times a second. Oh, my friend. Our theory of glandular stimulation through electrical impulses was correct. Another low visibility environment where echolocation is helpful is the ocean, and the best echolocators are the toothed cetaceans, like dolphins. Nobody ever trained a porpoise, but judging by their ability to stand on their tails, they have possibilities. Dolphins are amazing explorers, hunters, and social creatures despite not being able to rely on their sight or their sense of smell to navigate their environment. And they manage to do it all through echolocation. It's plain to see why saltwater fishermen hate to see porpoises appear. They can ruin fishing. To make their clicking noise, they slap structures in their blowholes called sonic lips. 
they have two pairs of lips, as they evolved from the two nostrils in their terrestrial ancestors, so they can make two clicks simultaneously. The sound then travels through the melon, the fatty part of the dolphin's head, which can change its shape to focus the sound wave to the object of the dolphin's attention. It's basically a lens for sound. The echoes are then received through the dolphin's lower jaw and transmitted to the inner ear. And all of this happens in a fraction of a second, as sound travels faster in water than in the air. Now, since the watch is waterproof... I guess that proves that sound also travels better through water. That's right. Rehabilitated dolphins at the Dolphin Research Center in Florida are teaching scientists about their ability to see through their ears. Blindfolded dolphins are able to find a metal ring at the bottom of a pool by sensing the differences in the echoes that bounce off the ring and those that bounce off the sand. A helpful tool when you're looking for your keys before leaving the house. This other dolphin can copy his friend's actions just by hearing them. Their ears are really high precision tools. Fortunately for beachgoers and scuba divers, we can't hear the clicks, as they're emitted at over 100 kilohertz in order to avoid being heard by killer whales. Toothed cetaceans are not the only mammals who echolocate. Over a hundred species of shrews and several other small mammals have developed the ability to use sound for navigation. Have you ever heard of a shrew? As in taming no, of the... the animal. Bradford called them Soric Cerisidae when he showed you one. Oh, then shrew must be the common name for those cute little animals. Cute? That's the last word you can use to describe those little monsters. They're the most horrible animals on the face of the earth. Shrews, for example, are very vocal animals and are known to twitter when exploring new environments. Like bats, shrews are nocturnal animals, but since they're close to the ground, they're able to use their sense of smell to find food. Do you believe in fairy tales? Well, I'm a little old for that sort of thing, but uh, what do you have in mind? There are two or three hundred giant shrews out there. Monsters weighing between 50 and 100 pounds. That's as big as a full-grown wolf. And what's more, they are beginning to starve. In both bats and dolphins, there was a need to develop high-frequency echolocation to avoid attracting predators. But shrews' tweets might not be loud enough to attract predators and are even in the range of human hearing. Their echolocation is very rudimentary, and it's mostly used as a complementary tool to determine soil density and to sense big obstacles like logs and rocks. The most unlikely animals to echolocate are birds. Only a handful of genera are known to do this, and among them, the oil bird is the king of the sonar. Oil birds should be called bat birds. They only have their current name due to the fact that their babies are so fat that they can be used as fuel for oil lamps. But their behavior is surprisingly bat-like. Their huge colonies roost in caves as high as possible. They're fully nocturnal, and, of course, they echolocate. Unlike the other animals in this episode, they only eat fruit and have amazing nocturnal vision, which suggests that they don't need to echolocate to find food. The majority of their echolocation happens in their caves, as a way to navigate their pitch-black homes and possibly to communicate with each other in one of the greatest cave cacophonies on Earth. Despite this, there's evidence to suggest that echolocation has evolved separately multiple times in birds. With a little luck, we might see new birds develop this amazing sense.
If you watch the channel regularly, you may have noticed that I've been wearing my new Animal Logic watch. It was made by Undone Watches, today's episode's sponsor. Undone Watches is one of our best friends and supporters. They've designed several watches based on the art of the show and given some away to fans from all over the world. The watches are awesome. I wear mine every day. If you like them, you have one more chance to win one. The last two contests were such a success that Undone is back with a brand new design and they want to give you a chance to win one of them. The new watch is absolutely stunning. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Click the link in the description to enter for a chance to win one of these amazing timepieces. It's the most stylish way to show your love of animals and your support for the show. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching, stay safe and see ya! Twenty-four hours, there'll be one shrew left on the island, and he'll be dead of starvation. An excellent example of overpopulation. Well, you know something, Doctor? What's that? I'm not going to worry about overpopulation just yet.